Boof CV 0.28 was just released and has a bunch of new features and improvements. Let's start by highlighting new features found in some of the demonstration applications by opening the Black Ellipse demo. Okay, so um, some of the improvements are that uh, it will remember the location of the file you last opened, which makes it much easier. Uh, it will also maintain a list of previously opened files that you can go through. Um, well, you could always play videos. Um, it's actually, it's rendering um, performance has been sped up quite a bit. Um, before on Linux, when you zoomed in and out or when you turned on contours, it actually ran a lot slower. So this is all much faster now. Uh, support for large images has also improved. Um, you can open a webcam and it actually gives you a set of options. Um, I'm not going to actually open a webcam because that will mess up my um, nifty little video on the lower right. Fisheye calibration has recently been added. Right now I'm going to use the newly created calibration configuration GUI that's part of the calibration application included with Boof CV. First let's tell it to use a universal Omni model. Now let's tell it uh, where to get the images from. Okay, so those are in the right location. Let's open this. It quickly processes and detects features inside all of the images, and it's just letting me know that there was one image where I was not able to detect a chessboard pattern. Um, it's much harder to detect um, chessboard patterns or any pattern inside a fisheye image because of the extreme distortion. So you can see I can switch through in this um, application, and it'll show me the location of all the um, detections in the order, which is used for debugging. The circles indicate um, the magnitude of the error for that one feature, the reproduction error. Um, and then to test the calibration, you can also undistort part of the image at a time. You can't undistort the whole image at once because um, for this particular fisheye lens, it has a field of view of 185 degrees, which can't be represented by a fisheye, or sorry, by a pinhole camera. All of this you can um, do programmically. Um, look inside the examples directory for sample code. Hexagonal calibration grid pattern support has been added. Um, and asymmetric grid pattern support has been removed. Asymmetric grids were a mistake. I should have listened to that little voice inside my head that told me they made no sense and why would anyone use uh, this pattern. The main advantage of hexagonal grids is that um, they have a higher point density than uh, regular grid patterns. And right now I'm just going to kind of play around since I think some of these visualizations look kind of cool. So you can zoom in, see the number of each circle, as well as look at the shapes that detected. A new polyline fitting algorithm has been added. A polyline uh, fitter fits line segments around the contour. And I'll switch to binary mode to demonstrate that a little bit better. So these colored lines are the indicate the number of sides and uh, show you the, where the polyline is, while the little circle is the corner of the polyline. There are several parameters that you can adjust. Uh, one of the more important ones is concave versus convex. So here it doesn't make that much of a difference. However, if I go to this image over here, it makes a big difference. So if I go back to convex, it doesn't fit anything, but go to concave, it does actually a good job. I also need to increase the number of sides in order to fit all these different shapes. So let's go up to a pretty high number. And also go back to the input image. Now the new algorithm and the old algorithm can be toggled. Let's go to the old algorithm. And then you can see some problems, like around here, it doesn't really fit that that well, and you got that right there. But if I go to the new algorithm, it actually does a pretty good job. And it even handles the smaller shapes, which was a major issue uh, when it came to some of the calibration targets. It just uh, wasn't able to fit stuff away when it was far, farther the distance. A first pass at QR code support has been added. QR codes are a type of fiducial or marker that was designed for use in automotive factories, but are also popular consumer goods, as is shown in this image. Uh, what is being encoded in this image is the address of a website on Facebook that when you take a picture with your phone, um, your phone would automatically go there.
The detector used inside Proof CV is designed to work well in both low and high resolution images and is able to detect small targets inside of larger images. As you can see here, it also runs quite fast, as you can see with this time up here. And also you can click if you want to rerun it a few times. Um, typically Java applications get faster the more you run it. And um, it's been tested on like 4K by 3K images quite a bit. And in that case, it takes like uh, about 100 and something milliseconds. Uh, the new detector, which is included, has a couple of interesting features that are absent in other open source uh, QR code detectors, as far as I know. Uh, it will return the location of failed targets, which are shown in red in this video. Oh, this is also running in real time right now. Uh, you can also use all the internal information which is saved. For example, there's a homography as well as the corner points, all of which can be used to estimate the pose of a QR code, um, which is then useful for um, running a localization application. It does have some weaknesses. It doesn't handle um, blurred images as well as other detectors. And it also can't handle damaged QR codes right now, like if the finer pattern, which is these little squares right here is ever damaged, then they won't be able to detect the QR code. But there are plans to fix that in the next version. Uh, the little yellow thing here represents the finder pattern, and then these lines is the graph, which is used internally to detect uh, to help find um, the full QR code. Along with a QR code detector, a QR code encoder was also added to the new version of Booth CD. The main purpose for this was actually for debugging, but you can use it to generate your own PDF and um, PDF documents with the QR code as well as images. So here's the application used to create a PDF or image from a QR code. As I type, it will automatically create um, and show you what the QR code will look like. And you can control all features of it. So right now version is automatic, but I could tell it to do version 23 if I wanted. I can also go back and try to tell to do version 1, but um, there's too much data to encode in version 1, so it just shows you a red square. Let's go back to 5. Uh, I can change the error um, correction. Um, these different letters determine how much of a um, bit error rate it can recover from. The pattern has to do like, with the pattern you see inside, and then the mode changes if it's going to encode in like numeric, alphanumeric, byte, or kanji. All the Mac is somewhat intelligent. Uh, the version in Booth CV actually doesn't do a huge amount, uh, but uh, it does do some switching. It could be improved to compress the image even more and some more things like that. Uh, there are also different printing options. You can fill the paper of a whole grid. Um, you can send it uh, straight to a printer by clicking this. Oh, let me show you a little printing dialog. I uh, don't do that right now. You can save it to the disk, and then I'll show you the saving location. You can change it to do a PNG image. Um, there's a bunch of different stuff. There's also a command line interface for this application where you can save it anywhere. Um, and then there's also a program interface that you can use. And you can also extend the existing source code to support other file formats that are currently not supported. So there's an abstract class which encodes all the logic for creating the QR code, but then you need to provide the specifics for outputting it. Several new thresholding or binarization algorithms have been added. What I'm showing here is block O2, which is one of the new ones. It was added to actually improve performance of the QR code detector, which is also why I'm inside the QR code detector app, so you can see. Um, there are a lot of different parameters you can tweak. For example, you can change it uh, so they will use a local block around instead of just uh, one block. So in this case, it's using a 3x3 three three region of blocks when computing the OTSU threshold. You can also like scale the threshold up and down for th further tuning. And then there's a new thing um, which I came up with called, uh, I'm just calling it OTSU2, due to the lack of a better name, where it handles some edge cases where if you have um, highly saturated images, it performs better. There's also block mean and loco otsu. Loco otsu is actually very small, but uh, I remember seeing some academic papers that used it. Um, when local algorithms run, they're actually running a kind of like rolling um, threshold across the whole image versus blocks break into discrete blocks and hop between them. Um, block algorithms tend to run much faster. 
um, global just processes the whole image at once. A GUI has also been added for printing uh, calibration targets. This GUI will show you what the calibration target looks like before you print it, which can be very useful. Um, also clearly um, shows you what um, rows and columns mean. Some people count the number of squares, other people count the number of inner corners, which is what OpenCV does. And of course you can switch between all the different types of targets available in BoostCV. And then there are several predefined um, pieces of paper you can do, like you can do A4 if you're a metric person and you can change like the units that you specify it in. If you choose something that's impossible, it'll just kind of show you what this is, and um, millimeters is technically possible, but not very useful. You can send it straight to a printer, like so, or you can save it to disk as a PDF document.